Football is back. Welcome back to the Northern Steel Podcast, episode 50, 5-0. Ryan Chazier, bless up. It's a good year. It's a good time. We're finally back after months of hiatus because why do a podcast when there's nothing going on, Chris? Chris, you tell the people why we should do a podcast when nothing's going on. You shouldn't. You're right. You shouldn't. We're not forcing content. We're not doing that. We're doing the podcast our way. And now we're back because training camp starts today. They came yesterday. They got their rooms. They got their furniture all lined up. They're all ready to go. And now and now training camp is going to start today. Chris, are you pumped? I'm pumped. Like you said, people are showing up. They're arriving and all their sorts of different ways and fashions and i mean people are coming through helicopters through scooters broderick jones he's like damn can i buy a car with my money yet no i'm gonna uber all the way to uh, training camp man yes sir yes sir and we're back we're refreshed ready to talk about some Steelers football from now probably until the end of the season when's the end of the season chris gonna be that's Uh, right super bowl sunday that's right. Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> I, I I was not expecting that answer, but I think we are on the same path of like February. Expectations are high. It is not it's a different year for us. We're ready to go. We're ready to play. We're ready to to get started. I got a new setup. Chris is by a refrigerator. We're ready to do this thing. <laughs> Staying cool. Uh the first thing I want to talk about after this welcome back, Chris, though, is At the end of our podcast, usually, we kind of give a little bit of a shout out to our other social media pages. We always ask you to please follow our TikTok, our YouTube, our Instagram, any other pages to see what we're up to. Mm -hmm. Well, there's something I got to talk about, Chris, because if you are a listener to the podcast every week, whether the Steelers win or lose, we do a quick highlight recap our own way of the Steelers game based on the six-minute highlight video on NFL.com. And we write out jokes uh, at the other team's expense, at the Steelers' expense, and it's something fun we like to do. And I post little highlight clips of that six-minute highlight on TikTok and on Instagram for reals. You can see it. I want to talk about how (laughs) there's a lot of Salty Browns fans out there, a lot of really angry little, little... Uh, small-brained, little, tiny, tiny peen, if you will, Cleveland Browns fans out there that got really upset at us for our Deshaun Watson jokes. Real the bad. The ignorance, the irony, everything about it. They got a very mad. They they you know they they bring up the classic. Oh, but who was your quarterback? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Okay. Listen. At the end of the day. These are just jokes that Chris and I are writing, and they're about, uh, and it doesn't matter what we think. Deshaun Watson's still going to play football, but I'm going to root against this man, and you're our rival, so get over it. But boy, Browns fans are real upset. So if we hurt your feelings, or if we made fun of your precious idol, Deshaun, or if you are just so sad, and you just need an extra massage on us, just... Make sure you not wipe those us. tears. Yeah, not at, well. It could be on us without our consent because that's what your quarterback likes to do. But that's neither Oof. here nor there. <laughs> you off. can you can wipe those tears and get ready to get destroyed by the Steelers twice this year. And we'll be back with more jokes. And if you don't like if you don't like the sexual assault jokes, you know we'll keep it to. The contract. We'll keep it to the guaranteed money. And we'll see how that plays out. But if you're one of those salty people who decided to listen to right now, because we got a lot of followers, and you're like, I want to see what these two idiots have to say. We're not sorry. So get ready for the season. And you better you best believe that when the Steelers win, I'm coming back with a pettiness to comment an L and a clown emoji on every comment I have. Get ready. It's coming. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, in other news, in better news, and way better news, 
Alex Highsmith just got paid. Yeah, shout out to Alex Highsmith and the Highsmith family. Good job. That is great news. Great news. We talked last year a lot in the offseason leading into the season about how we were really excited for Alex Highsmith's year about the product, uh, the productivity we kind of guessed. And actually, we like made some guesses on what he could get, and he surpassed those in sacks. He was phenomenal mm-hmm. last year with a healthy Watt. They should be able to go off. They paid him a good. They paid him a great contract to keep in Pittsburgh. And uh, congrats to him. Things are looking good, Chris. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, Omar's making some moves, locking down a player like Highsmith to a longer contract. And listen, there's been talks through you know Colin Coward, who's you know talking about comparing us to like offensive teams and things like that and how we're so high on defensive spending and, and whatever. But like, you know what? I think when you have something so good as TJY, Alex Highsmith, can't, you, you got to pay those guys. You got to make sure that they are long-term stealers, hopefully lifelong stealers. And I still think at the end of the day, if you have a very, very good defense, defense wins championships, if you can stop a high-powered offense like the Chiefs, I mean, you're you're sitting really good. So I'm all for it. Pay pay the dudes. Um, we have a really young, great squad on the offense. Man, I'm I'm all for it. I'm I'm happy about the signing. The the signing's done. All the rookies are signed. Joey Porter Jr. just signed recently. Everyone's ready to go. And now we're here, baby. Training camp. I'm sure there's still rumors out there of who the Steelers could potentially pick up. But let's worry about that when it actually happens. Right now, it's talking about the players that are on the field right now, ready to play. And it's time, Chris, for training camp. We are two weeks away from the Steelers' first preseason game tomorrow. (laughs) Two weeks away tomorrow, I believe. And it's it's time. It's excited. Let's talk a little bit about training camp uh, before we... Head on out of here. This is a good refresh back into the mold of doing the podcast again, and we'll be here again every week from now going forward. But now that training camp's here, Chris, who are you, who are some players that you're excited to watch in general? I uh, I gosh, I feel like we had such a busy off season, and looking at it, uh, there's a lot of new faces to this Pittsburgh Steelers team. Now. Um, you know, obviously, we could be talking about our rookie class. Uh, th- there's a lot of big names there. Um, you know, I, I'm excited to see how Broderick Jones does. Uh, I'm excited to see how uh, both JPJ, but honestly, I'm very excited to see Trice because I know he was highly regarded going into the draft, had his injury, and then that kind of pushed him down to that seven. So I think he has a lot of height, a lot of, you know, playmaking ability. Uh, so I'm ready to just see that. Uh, rookies aside, man, we got we got some free agents coming in. I'm I really, really, really I think the position that I'm eager to see play and how they perform is our middle linebacker group. Uh, that was obviously an area of weakness for us last season. Uh, getting rid of Devin Bush, Robert Spillane. Uh, thank God. Uh, <laughs> but you know it's. Uh, you know, who, who do you have now? A Landon Roberts and Cole Holcomb uh, yep. to kind of take that one-two punch from us, hopefully provide some coverage and get those blitzes in down the middle. I I think that's the group that I'm going to be keeping my eye on throughout this training camp and uh, preseason. What about you, Dom? Who are you most excited to, to watch? Well, like you said, we got a lot of acquisitions. I got the list pulled up right now and not – including our draft class, which is always exciting to watch. I mean, uh, from from good to utility to rotation players, we got Quincy Roche back, Patrick Peterson, DeMonte KZ back, Nate Herbig, Larry Ogunjobi back, Cole Holcomb, Alandon Roberts, Isaac Sumalo, uh, J- James Pierre back, LaRaven Clark, Zach Gentry back, Bra- uh, Braden Fehoko. Someone's trying to call me, always. Um, uh, Keanu Neal that'll be interesting to see Tanner Muse, Armand Watts uh, Braden Mann, a punter potentially a good punter battle coming up Allen Robinson, gonna be exciting there Shannon Sullivan, Manny Jones Mace Rudolph back, Hakeem Butler is an exciting person to watch as well big wide receiver 
Dylan Scott, and oh yeah, forgot about Marcus Golden, outside rotational edge mm-hmm. piece. There's a lot there. There's a lot to be excited about. I would say, I mean, any of those guys exciting. It's one of those times where you get to, uh, if you're glued to your phone like Chris and I are, and you see tweets all the time, it's kind of just like what names kind of pop off at you. You're going to see names of people you might not have ever heard of, which is cool. Because it, it, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to make the team. But try to pay attention to, to when you see names of players you are excited for, like the new acquisitions, like Pat P or Marcus Golden or uh, the linebackers that Chris had mentioned. Uh, I'm excited for also to hear about some of like our offensive weapons. I mentioned Akeem Butler, tall, super tall wide receiver. That'd be awesome. Uh, but Calvin Austin back after a year of injury. I want to hear how he does. How's he doing in there? Is he uh like is he really good route runner with his speed? He's doing some more jet sweeps because we know Matt Canada's got a hard on for those jet sweeps. What is his role gonna be? And uh and, and actually, Chris, I don't want to steal yours. You actually had another player that you talked to me about before that you want to keep an eye on in terms of role and what his role could be moving forward based on the players that we've gotten. I did do that, and I'm trying to remember who I said. <laughs> That's Connor Hayward. <laughs> oh, yes, that guy. <laughs> we literally had this conversation yesterday, and I just think I, uh, you know, was was a little <laughs> sidetracked. It was we were driving. I was, it was all a bunch of work stuff. But anyway, that's uh, I know none of you care about that stuff, so let's get into the, the nitty-gritty, the down and dirty. Uh, let, let me talk about this guy. So, yes, Connor Hayward is a person of interest in my mind. Um, because obviously the Steelers, like you mentioned, uh, re-signed Zach Gentry. And then, you know, we picked up Darnell Washington, the huge force coming out of Georgia. So we have, uh, the iron giants is what I'm going to call our tight end group because they're big, big guys, you know? Yeah, totally. Uh, You know, and, and, but the thing is, it's like when we got Connor Hayward finally into the playbook, that dude is shifty. He has reliable hands. Dude is making grabs like it was nobody's business. He's a and playmaker. I just, he is. He's down down to it. He's a playmaker. And that's someone that you need to get in the offense. Um, you know, I, I've heard talks about like, put him in the slot. You know, let's get him in fullback. Get rid of, you know, whatever. And, you know, I don't really care where he plays as long as he is in a position to where we can get him the ball because he is such a reliable source for us. I just right. feel like with the personnel that we have at tight end, dude, it's so hard to get Lil Lil Hayward amongst those guys. Not saying he can't compete, because I'd rather take his hands and athleticism over Zach Gentry any day. Right. But you have big, tall guys who can put up a wall on the outside and also like go down for catches. I don't know. That's going to be really interesting, and I'm very excited to see where. Connor is going to go. I think he found his place on the team last year. I think he found his value. And I don't think you can discredit that unless he just, for some reason hits a wall this year, but I think you have to find a place for him on this team. It'll be interesting. Like you said, to figure out where he could possibly go Uh, beyond Calvin and those guys, I think individually performance too, since there's not a battle technically this year is watching Kenny Pickett, hearing about how he does. How is he mm-hmm. going to do against uh, uh, our defense? I know our defense is a little newer too, but I expect them to be good. I expect them to be strong. So how is he going to do against the first team guys? Is he going to be able to move his weight on the field, kind of light it up? I expect him to take his bumps and bruises. I do expect to hear that he gets picked off in training camp. This is the time to get picked off. This is like the time to work out kinks and do things. So if you are a fan that's keeping on uh, keeping up on updates, and let's say Kenny Pickett goes through a day where he's throwing picks left and right. Don't panic yet. This is the time to throw picks. This is the time to try things to see if they work. But I expect him to also move the move the ball down the field on our defense too. And and the, uh, you know all, all three stages of our offense last year with Mitch, Kenny, and Mason in training camp did not win a lot of battles against the defense. I expect that to be a little more even this year because I expect the offense to take a big jump. So Kenny is an individual performance of we'll be looking at. Oh, absolutely. Dude, that dude's going to sling it this year. I just have the this this pit feeling in my stomach. 
You know, I've been seeing all of his videos and everyone's talking about his arm strength now. And, and, you know, obviously you get, you get those doubters, Dom, you get, you get those doubters coming in. Oh, if Kenny Pickett can't lead the Steelers. Oh, Kenny Pickett (laughs) can't. Oh, Kenny Pickett. This uh, has tiny hands, but a giant wiener. Listen, that one might be a fact. We've heard it but, all. We've heard it all. <laughs> but Kenny Pickett is going to make, here's my prediction, the largest jump from a last year player to this year player. I think he's going to squash a conversation of which quarterback was the best coming out of last year's draft class uh, and which quarterback deserves to be in the NFL. Because I know that was a big take from last year is mm-hmm. like, None of these guys are first rounders. None of these guys are the CJ Stroud, the Bryce Young. I, I'm tired of hearing about it. I think Kenny Pickett did a great job as a rookie. He really came into his own the back half of that season after our bye week. Guy, for a while, it just felt like there's nothing that he could do wrong. And this is coming out of a Matt Canada offense, which is atrociously bad. If you yeah. hear me, Matt, I'm talking to you. I'm talking about you. Get off of our team unless you help us. But like, get off of our team. Stop with the jet sweeps. Yeah. And um, uh, beyond that, too, but beyond like him getting a stronger arm and those things. Now he's got a full offseason to be a starter. He gets all the first team reps. So he doesn't have to worry about trying to figure out the offense. Matter of fact, in his interview yesterday, when they arrived to training camp, he talked about that he's been working with Matt Canada about uh, from spring OTAs about what works and what doesn't. And he's adding in his own influence. He's adding his own things. There are reports that Matt Canada is not going to open up the playbook. I am not believing those yet until I see an actual game and we don't do anything creative. I'm not going to believe it yet. And and that's not because I trust Matt Canada, but I think, th- but does it seem like he has this like, uh, like smug attitude to him, and he seems like the per- he seems like the guy to be like, like he like he did change something or he did talk to Kenny, but he's like, oh, I didn't do anything. I'm here still, but I haven't changed. But he did. It kind of seems like his vibe. So I'm not going to believe it yet. It's a stoop. It, it is. Totally, it has totally. to be because Mac, because he's so smug. And every time we talked to him, he was like, yeah, I mean, it's not my fault. They're just not good players. <laughs> and, and and now he he actually has a brand new playbook, is my my thoughts. And and we're going to score 30 points a game and knock on wood. And and then all of a sudden he's going to be like, I told you, these are my plays from last year. Like, this is everything. Like, I, I didn't change anything about it. Like, they're just better players now because I coached them. Even if they don't score 30 points a game, how about they score 30 points in games and then win them? Since they haven't won a game, they've scored 30 points in in three years. Only one game per year. Very cool. Very good. There's a great stat for you. So looking for the offense to get better and actually score points and win them at the same time. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I mean, I agree. I, I expect Kenny to take a big leap. I think it's be good. I don't really... <sighs> It's weird because training camp's different like this. I don't really care. And I don't mean this in a wrong, I don't mean this in a bad way. I don't really care about Najee's individual performance. I've heard people th- saying that they want to pay attention to how Najee's going to play. I don't really care. I trust the dude. I think there's a lot of people dogging on him right now. I like him. I trust him. I think he's great. I think Bro. Warren's great. So it's like, I don't really care how he's going to do in training camp. I think he's going to be good. This is why I hate media, though, because I, obviously he went to that thing, which. You know, I I get why they did it. They they literally are in the backfield. Are you talking about the running the back committee meeting? Yeah, the, the running back thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and and I'm I'm getting so tired of the media because like I understand the situation. I and you know I think there's arguments both ways. I think when you look at the wear and tear uh, that gets put onto the bodies of these running backs, like yeah, you want some sort of like safety blanket like you want to feel appreciated because even though it might not you know coordinate to being that on that Super Bowl roster like it showed in the last however many years right but like like a decade th- th- like a decade but there's still you like any any running backs just like you're getting beat up because they're blocking they're running they're catching everything every part of it so like I get that aspect of it when Najee's saying like you know they're using us as tools whatever However, I hate the narrative that like 
Because I've seen some reports saying, well, I really hope this doesn't turn into a Le'Veon Bell situation. This is exactly how it was with the Le'Veon Bell situation. No, it's no. not. No. No, it's not. Le'Veon Bell was greedy. Like, I'm glad that he came out. He apologized a uh, hundred years later. But at the same time, <laughs> yeah. like, this is not even close to that situation. Najee, he, he, he went out and he said... I love Mr. Rooney. I love Omar. I love Mr. Tomlin. I love the Steelers. They have treated me with respect. They appreciate me and everything. I just think he's fighting for an overall cause. I don't think he's going to sit out. I don't think he's going to not try harder because of what's going on. I just think he's like, hey, this is my position. I don't think we're getting justified in our pay. Yeah. These are my opinions and thoughts. No, totally. Oh, yeah, I completely agree. And you know what? The... The whole thing with Super Bowl winners, too, and the running backs, like I agree with because the more important position is the quarterback. However, the Steelers are built for winning in an old school way. Will they do it? It's tough to say because the team hasn't won that way in a very long time. But they are built that way. They're built with a very strong defense, and they're going to run the ball, and then Kenny's got to be able to just keep moving the ball down the field. Like if you're playing against the Chiefs, it truly is like you might think, oh, to beat, to beat the Chiefs, you need to have firepower. And you, need to, and you need to beat them all the time. But the times that the Chiefs have lost, it's because of defense and the other team holds the ball. And that's and that's what you got to do. You got you to gotta be able to defend the Chiefs. If you get them to punt three times in that game, and every and every time you get the ball back, you're able to take a seven to ten minute long drive down the field and score touchdowns, you're going to win that game. And that's kind of what they're built Absolutely. for. Can they do it? Who knows? But that's what they're built for, for sure. And and listen, I mean, like, obviously, I'm this means this is me playing devil's advocate about this whole situation, but like, I do think obviously the wide receivers and weapons that you put around your quarterback are more important because that's who he's throwing to. However, when then you have a quarterback like Pat Mahomes, and I mean, like, yeah, he has Travis Kelsey, but who else on the team did he have last year when they won? Not one other person other than Kelsey went over a thousand yards. Fun yeah. fact. You know, like, are uh, is our wide receivers expendable then? I mean, like, think about how often they don't. Sign. Look at Tyreek. The dude was like, I'd much rather play with Tua. I want to be a Miami Dolphin for life. Well, I don't think he's going to win another ring for the rest of his life <laughs> playing for, for Miami. So, I mean, but you know who did win? The Chiefs, because he has an insane playmaker in Pat Mahomes. I just feel like skill players in general, I don't know, maybe maybe running backs get the short end of the stick, but like... I don't know. I don't think you necessarily need the primo wideouts either. I, I was just saying, because I mean, the Steelers and they draft the Steelers draft wide receivers well, but they also have overturned wide receivers a lot, especially in the past like six years. You know, like it was yeah. always like AB and then everybody else, and they always kept turning them over. And it's still been that way. I mean, I mean, just a couple of years ago, our, our top three were Juju, Claypool, and Deontay. And now it's Deontay Pickens and Allen Robinson. And I think that's a stronger group, to be honest. Yeah. So yeah. it's just, it's just, they, they overchange. And I thought that group at, at the time was strong too. So it, it just changes all the time. But do you have any Absolutely. more individual performances? I don't know if I do. I guess like individually. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. You go first. I was just going to say, if we, if we don't, I mean, we could obviously just talk about the positional battles too, in which I, I'm kind of curious about. Uh, myself yeah, because yeah we'll, we'll go into that i was gonna say a quick yeah. overview on, on, on individual stuff is if you hear names like i said pay attention to them uh like uh, like um rookies from last year like the marvin leal or rookies from this year that aren't really battling that hard like um they don't really have a battle per se but they're they should contribute like benton um listen to, to the safeties names getting called listen to uh people of that caliber i guess but yeah let's go into some battles chris what, what's a battle you you're excited to pay attention to and, and hear about in this training camp. So obviously I think one that's really interesting and, and on everybody's mind is the battle at left tackle. And I think that one comes to mind for me specifically because we went out of our way, we traded up and we got a dog in Broderick Jones. Broderick Jones yep. is a big, big man, had, you know, led charge on that Georgia dogs uh, offensive line. And, you know, he, uh, made differences. And I think as a first round draft pick, 
especially as a lineman, you don't really see linemen sit and learn uh, like you do skill players. You know, they're usually right. the ones starting right away. However, after seeing reports and things from like, you know, early on, you know, Dan Moore, the, there's big talks around him saying how he's put on a lot of muscle, lost some weight. Like he's, he's moving faster. Like he's, he, he doesn't want to just give up his position because that's what they drafted. So right. I think that is that is going to be a big battle and something I'm excited to watch. And quite frankly, I, you know, I'm just going to throw this out there. Who's to say that that Chucks is safe in his right tackle position? You know, I mean, exactly. It, 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 let's say Dan Moore is so good, but so so is uh, I just said his name a hundred times, uh, Broderick Jones. Broderick, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, who's to say that they're like, hey, I, we want Broderick on this, uh, you know, Kenny's blind side or whatever, but like maybe the battle's going to be over on the right tackle side. Maybe Dan Moore's going to try to sneak in and steal it from Chucks. I mean, he was rated lower than Kevin uh, Kendrick Green on Madden, so what does that tell you? You know what I mean? <laughs> that's and, bad. <laughs> dude, that's so bad. <laughs> um, So that is, to me... Uh, a big battle I'm looking forward to. Is there a part of that that you're excited for? Do you think I hit a lot of it on the head? No, yeah, I think, yep, I completely agree with that. Um, that's like an obvious battle, but I'm, I'm excited for I also think that uh, I'm not, like, expecting Broderick Jones to start right away. And I know it sounds weird when you, like you said, you traded up for a guy that you really believe in, but it's because I believe in him long term. I think he's got all the athletic ability and the skill and the agility to be so good and so quick and so fast, but he's raw. He's got to kind of relearn how to block. So I don't really expect him to start right away. Maybe oh. he does though. It's really funny. You say that and that we're talking about this. Cause I literally just got a tweet uh, from Nick Harbaugh that says, Omar oh. Khan said that Broderick Jones <laughs> has to earn it to start. So yep. there you have yeah. it. Uh, yeah. I mean, I thought I read yeah. that. I thought but, I read that yesterday that Tomlin said Dan Moore was going to start today on first team reps, which I'm like, yeah, not he's surprised by. no, yeah. He's been in there. Think, He's been the starter. And you know what? The good thing, too, is that I think we have a lot of depth, on, especially on offense, um, in, in all these positions that, like, you're going to, like, when Broderick Jones gets in there and other playmakers in skill positions, you have Mitch Trubisky leading the offense. That's a great person to lead. And that's a good veteran presence to help lead a whole team of depth pieces. And then Mason Rudolph after that, who's very capable as a quarterback. Like, like that's the thing that's exciting when we get to preseason too. Is that after Kenny's done, it's not like okay, snooze fest, turn off the TV. It's like okay, here comes Mitch, he can move the ball. Let's see how these skill players do. And then even later, it's like okay, here comes Mason, he can move the ball. So it's it's exciting that we have a lot of depth there, and I think all those guys can help out all the depth pieces of every skill position on the offense for sure. I agree, and you know if for. Moving along with the, with the battle aspect of it, unless you have more to say on that offensive front, um, oh. let let's go to something that you know I kind of just thought about, and that's the defensive backs. And I know you're probably thinking, you're like, well, of course we're going to talk about the defensive backs. Oh, we, yeah. we just got we just got oh, Pat yeah. we got yeah. rookies, but they're not the only defensive backs that's kind of in a battle because you right we we have Keanu Neal now in that safety position, and he's going to be going against Demonte Kazi. You KZ. know, KZ, whatever. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I apologize, Demonte. I don't mean to uh, butcher your last name. Uh, I'm yeah, just bitter because people we'll butcher. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we'll uh, right. But like, obviously that's going to be a big one because they're like two both big names and Demonte had a couple picks for us last year. He's familiar with the defense. Keanu Neal's a hard hitting guy. He kind of reminds me of Ryan Clark a little bit with his play style. He just likes to lower his head. You know, well, let me get in there. let me let me cut you off real quick and uh, plug Please. another podcast. That's not ours. Uh, I'm going to plug. It's called All Things Covered by uh, it's with oh. Brian McFadden and Patrick Peterson. And this Ooh. these are quotes from them. I'm not trying to steal their content. Go listen to their whole podcast. There's, there's little snippets that I really like. I, I heard it today before they started training camp. One, Patrick Peterson said with uh, in terms of KZ and Keanu Neal. It's it's what we think. KZ is more of like the ball hawk safety, and sure. KZ is more of like in the box thumper safety. As a matter of fact, Patrick Peterson's nickname for him is KO because the dude hits like a truck. And you mean Neil? Out. 
Oh yeah, sorry. Keanu Neal. He, he said Casey it, twice, <laughs> and I was like, right, well, yeah. yeah, okay, my bad. Reverse order thing I said: Casey Ballhawk, Keanu Neal, box safety. He likes to tackle. He'll be in there, rush the quarterback, and they call him KO because he hits so hard. Um, oh yeah. So uh, uh, and then with a uh, Patrick Peterson before we get to where he could play, he has talked about again being moved around a lot. I don't think he's going to be stuck on an island on the outside. He's been really alluding to moving around a lot. And he said that they, they talked about expectations for him this year. And he said his career high in picks is seven. And he got five last year for the Vikings. He said with how much they're moving him around, as a little hint to the fans out there, for how much they're moving him around, and for how good the front seven is with Watt, Highsmith, and Hayward attacking the quarterback, and how everyone on the, on the second day is going to be moving around, he predicts himself to get eight picks this year. He thinks he's going to go off this damn. year. He thinks he's going to go off. <laughs> He thinks, the defense is going to be, he thinks the defense is going to be very confusing for opposing offenses. So listen to that was podcast it? if you want to hear more about what he has to say. What was it, 2008 or 2010? What was Troy's largest hit pick season? Was that seven or eight picks? That, that was seven. He, he had 10. He had seven, 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 seven in 2010. 2010. Yeah. Coming after you, Troy. I guess we're we're going after that number. And I know there's been people before him that have had more picks in the season, but you know it's and, uh, of recent. Right, it's a good name so, to follow. So, so when you say battle with defensive backs, um, especially so with the safeties, I think it's more of like a game plan to confuse teams, right? With with KZ and Neil, like what what position are they going to play? Or are, are they both going to be at the same time? Maybe Neil's more of like a dime backer, a guy that can be in the box while KZ still out there if it's a big pass heavy offense they're going to play against but also with Peterson what's that going to look like for him in uh in this year because it sounds like he's not going to be stuck on an island unless he has to it sounds like the goal for him is to play outside play inside play zone inside especially for teams that have good tight ends you want to talk about the Chiefs again Travis Kelsey I mean if there's any cornerback on our team currently right now that I'm going to trust to play zone in that area where Travis Kelsey is going to be or other small receivers and running backs, it's going to be Patrick Peterson. Mm. Oh, absolutely. So, not, not even a question. Right. So let's, so, start, so go ahead and talk about the defensive back battle, but I think we should focus more on the outside cornerbacks and what that could possibly look like for us. I, you know, it's, <laughs> You, you know what the battle is. It, it, I mean, I think I think that was an <laughs> that was an interesting one to 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 bring up. And, and I mean, gosh, I'm even thinking about Trey Norwood being thrown in there at some point because I mean, he's still on the team. He's still playing right. at the safety position. Um, but yeah, talking about the guys on the outside. So um, right now, what I think what we have for sure because he was a very underrated player is Levi Wallace. Uh, you know, yep. playing on the outside. I think he proved himself to be a reliable corner. What did he come up with? Three, four picks last year? Four. Four? four? Yeah. Yeah, which is pretty damn good, I would say, being a, a cornerback and, and everything. Especially, and, especially uh, for us. Yes. <laughs> That's really good. Yeah. And so um, he's someone who I think is probably going to stay in that position. But, you know, with with uh, Pat Peterson moving around, you know, and and taking that that veteran, like, learn learning mentality kind of into – uh, Cam and to this team, like he's he's talked about being so excited to work with JPJ and uh, Trice and just yep. you know molding them and and turning them into players. I wouldn't be surprised if you just saw them kind of shuffling in and out of that outside role, uh, depending on looks and who they're being paired up against. But uh, that that itself is even going to be I don't know if you want to call it a battle because I think maybe we have an idea already of what's going to go on, but but definitely like schematics kind of figuring out yeah. that part of it i would say it's still a battle because i mean as of right now you know they're gonna do pat pete on the outside but we know they're gonna move him around but jpj and trice are both tall physical corners uh they really talk about their physical aspect of those two guys and i think where they're gonna excel is outside but are they gonna start there that's the thing i think i've talked to you about this I know they're going to excel on the outside, but why can't they play slot? For as fast yeah. and physical as they are, why can't they jam up a slot or a small slot receiver? Why can't they play on a tall tight end? They can. So I think it's a battle in terms of like, hey, out of the two of them, 
and others, but out of the two of them, who takes some snaps outside more often? Because maybe one of them excels better. And then after that, who's going to, maybe like if they put them at slot, who's, who's taking those snaps there? Not to mention, you still got people like James Pierre, who has flashes in a pan every now and then. And, and then a bunch of Walmart employees after that. But regardless, <laughs> there is there are some interesting moments to be like, like you said, schematics, where are they going to be placed? Where are they going to play in those areas there? Um, I think another small battle, which we don't have to get into, is the third running back spot. I'm, mm. a, big, I'm a big Ant Mac fan. It's not looking good for him, but I have faith in him. But we'll see, because you mentioned Alfonso Graham, and he did well in spring. So what's that, that third running back spot going to be? That's a battle right there. It's going to be interesting. Um, I mean, gosh, even looking at the depth pieces of the uh, defensive line, I mean, we got yep. Benton, right? We got yep. Benton. We got Leal, who's maybe yep. being more towards that defensive end side, where I think yep. uh, Benton is more of the in- interior guy. But we have that. Oh, what's going to happen to Isaiah Loud- Loudermilk? I mean, yeah. is, is he going to be push down that line. I feel like you're pretty set with uh, with Cam Ogunjobi and why oh, can't th- is it going to be Benton on yeah, like is that the, so. yeah probably so with Montrevious Adams kind of uh sitting back behind it's, him so it's either going to be I think it's going to be Benton eventually because the other defensive tackles we have are like Fehoko and uh, Armand Watts right now. Oh, I forgot about those guys. So but I think Benton's going to be a better player, so he'll probably get there. Um, he's other, younger. I guess, he's faster. Yeah. Right. Punter's a battle. This is from right here. Unfortunately, Harvin's hasn't been the best, so Punter's a little battle. I'm not really focused on it, but that's just a battle. No. The wide receiver's a little battle. I think our top three bit, are set. Yeah. But Kelvin Austin's there. Hakeem Butler's there. They're, you know, There's players there that are trying to make the team still. Gunner's still there for some reason. So I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> So, yeah, there's uh, tight ends kind of a battle, like we mentioned with, with Hayward. Uh, but those are some battles to look at, and I am excited to get it started, Chris. It's finally here. We're getting ready. Yeah, I'm ready for it. It's going to be sick. So next week is going to be awesome because now we're going to get to talk about the things we saw from, uh, like, today till next week. We do the podcast again. We'll be able to talk about that and see some news will come out. We'll get to talk about who's progressing and maybe who we're hearing about, who we're not hearing about. We can either go into some more expectations on the season if we want to next week, but I think it's good. Let's wrap it up here for now. Uh, get ready for some serious football. Some training camps back. If you are excited for it, be glued to your phone. Nick Farabaugh is going to be live tweeting. Brandon Wall is going to be live tweeting. Alex Cazora has always got fire articles coming out. So stay glued to that. Um, We are going to sign off for today. My name's Dominic. This is Chris. Serious football's back. Chris, you got any last words to say? Gosh, I mean, there's so much, but, you know, go Steelers. Exactly. Go Steelers. Oh, and if you want to, you can donate to Northern Steel Podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you can, I guess. You can. You can go to... Our podcast is hosted by Anchor. There's a spot there to donate. You can give us a dollar monthly. And you could get, well, you we used to be able to get that. used to let us afford McChickens. Do $5 monthly, and Chris and I can both afford a McChicken a month. And it will be great. Two for four, baby. <laughs> All right. <laughs> See you guys next week. Deuces. Peace.